Just a closer walk with you, Lord God. Help us all because we need you, Lord. We need your spirit to lead, God, and direct us in the way that we should go. We ask you this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. To the, to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Welcome to another virtual Bible study of the Isle of Patmos Baptist Church. The Lord God allow us to have. The Isle of Patmos Baptist Church is located on the northeast corner of 12th and Rhode Island Avenue, northeast, where our pastor is Bishop Calvin L. Matthews. Yes, as the Lord Spirit leads you to that church, that church of God, come on, come one, come all, and hear what thus says the Lord through our pastor. Calvin L. Matthews. Amen. It's in Washington, D.C. Yes, yes. Hi. Uh, thank you and welcome to another virtual Bible study. Um, this week we are in first the book, New Testament book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 4. The Lord God had allowed us to go through 1 Corinthians chapter 3 last week. And this is uh, chapter 3, chapter 4. It's still Paul. God inspired the Apostle Paul to write a letter to the church of Corinth. To the church he started in Corinthians. And, and it's to us too. Yes, let's embrace the Lord's word. He inspired men to write his word for our hearing, for our direction. So, and these words are in the Bible. I have the New International Bible in front of me. Uh, some of us know it as the NIV. And in the last words in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul was in his letter to the Corinth, to, to the church of Corinth, Paul in, in verse 22, Paul said, Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or present, or the future, all are yours. And you are Christ, and Christ is God. Amen. That was the last words in chapter 3. And chapter 4, 1 Corinthians, Paul opens up this chapter 4. Still talking about the church leaders. And verse 1 reads, This then is how you ought to regard us, as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the mysteries God has revealed. Now, it is required 
that those who have been given trust must prove faithfully. I care very little if I am judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not judge myself. My conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges me. Yes. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of, of the heart. At that time, each will receive their praise from God. Now, brothers and sisters, I have applied these things to myself and to Apollos for your benefit, so that you may learn from us the meaning of the saying, Do not go beyond what is written. Then you will not be puffed up in being a follower of one of us over against the other. For who makes for, for who makes you different from everyone else? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not? Amen. Amen. Let me, let me pause right there after reading verse 7. Yeah. In this letter, here again, Paul is saying, Paul is saying that the believers should view leaders as servants of Christ. Yes. View our leaders as servants of Christ and, and Jesus will evaluate their work when the time comes based on faithfulness and not to be and, and, and not on the different gifts and tasks he has given them. Okay? Let Jesus be the judge. Leaders, leaders may not have the gift the world, the worldly people views as important, but what counts with God is our faithfulness is in, in, in using the gifts and abilities we have to serve others. Amen. Amen. Yes. Let me say that again. What counts with God is our faithfulness in using the gifts and abilities we have to serve others. Amen. Amen. Now, verse 8. Verse 8 reads, Already you have all you want. Already you have been, you, already you have become rich. You have become, you have begun to reign. And that without us. How I wish that you really had begun to reign so that we also might reign with you. Verse 9. For it seems to me that God has put us apostles on display at the end of the, of, uh, the possession, possession. Like those condemned to die in an arena. We have, made, we have been made a spectacle to the whole universe to angels and to angels as well as to our to human beings. We are fools for Christ, but you are so wise in Christ, we are weak, but you are strong. You are honored, we are dishonored. To this very hour we go hungry and thirsty, we are in rags, we are brutally treated, we are homeless. We work hard with our own hands. When we are cursed, we bless. When we are persecuted, we endure it. When we are in slander, we, we answer kindly. We have become the scum of the earth, the garbage of the world, right up to this moment. Amen. Amen. Let me pause right there. Remember, this is Paul writing this letter to the Corinthians, the church in Corinth. Okay, and, and it seems like Paul felt like a, a prisoner being dragged along at the end of a, a victory possession. To be a leader or Christian is to share the public rejection and suffering of Jesus. 
Amen. Instead, instead of instead of building lower empires, spiritual leaders abandon all and willingly accept suffering to to better serve God and other believers. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, spiritual leaders, they abandon all of that. Yes, and are willingly, and willingly accept suffering to better serve God and other believers. Amen. Amen. And let's go down to Paul's warning. In verse 14, Paul giving them a warning. Just listen. Verse 14 reads, I am writing, I, I am writing this not to shame you, but to warn you as my dear children. Even if you had had 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers in for you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I became your father through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. For this reason, I have sent to you Timothy, my son whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of my way in, of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in every church. Pause right there. Amen. Leaders... Leaders, yes, leaders should model the life that they teach about. Yes, leaders should model the life that they teach about. And Paul is asking the Corinthians to adopt the attitude he has taken and follow his example in thinking of leaders. Uh, um, just, just like um, Jesus told his followers in Matthew chapter 11 verse 29, when, remember, when Jesus um, told his followers to learn from his example of gentleness and humility. Matter of fact, let me read that. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. It reads, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Amen. It's still there. Look at it. Believe it. And Timothy, speaking of Timothy, Timothy had traveled with Paul on his second missionary journey. His role was to see that Paul's letters was received and implemented. Okay? It's Timothy. Now we're down to verse 18. Amen? Verse 18 reads, Some of you have become arrogant. As if I was, as, as, as if I were not coming to you. But I will come to you very soon, if the Lord is willing. And then I will find out not only how those arrogant people are talking, but what power they have. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. What do you prefer? Shall I come? Shall I come to you with a rod of discipline, or shall I come in love and with a gentle spirit? Amen. That concludes the reading of 1 Corinthians chapter 4. But let me say, Paul, as we read, Paul concluded in his warnings. Paul concluded with a warning in his in his writing to the Corinthians. Spiritual leaders do have authority, and this matter of unity is so vital that any, any who, who remain arrogant or decisive will be disciplined the next time Paul visits. Amen. So what Paul wrote, Paul was inspired by God to write to, to the Corinthians in the church of Corinth. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we come again, Lord, to thank you for your words that you inspire men to write for our hearing. 
Lord, we thank you for what your word is saying to us. We pray that your spirit will reveal to us what your word is, is saying. Lord God, we don't know everything, but you do. And we pray that your spirit would, would just move us to help others. And you give us the strength as your spirit leads us. Lord God, we pray that you just stay with us, be with us, lead us and guide us, Lord. Lord, we pray your blessings, your grace, and your love upon all your children that you have made. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of Lord God, we pray that you continue to bless our bishop of the Isle of Patmos Baptist Church, Calvin L. Matthews, and his family. The Isle of Patmos Baptist Church family, all the members there, and not just them, but all your children throughout this world, Lord, because it's you made us. We didn't make ourselves. We are your people, Lord God. So, Lord God, help us, keep us, stay with us, lead us and guide us. And Lord God, we thank you. We're giving the glory in all that we do. Yes, Lord, because we cannot make it without you. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. There are many people out here that we, that others are following behind, but it's Christ that makes the difference. It's Christ that died for our sins. Yes, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you. And I ask you this prayer in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Man, only because of you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 